glad to be here this morning again. Ndeko na furaha kuwa hapa asubuhi hii tena. this is the final lesson. Sasa hili ni somo fundisho la mwisho. It is not easy. Sio rahisi. To summarize a whole history. Kutamatisha historia yote in 5 hours of presentation. Kwa masaa matano ya kueleza. It is not easy. Sio rahisi. Children of God, watoto wa Mungu, I hope Natumaini. This is not mere history. Hii sio tu historia kawaida. I started by saying Ilianza kwa kusema history. Historia has no value. Haina maana if it is not having the inspiring witness of the testimony of God. Kama haitakuwa na msukumo wa sisi kwenda kushiriki uh, uh, kushiriki mambo ya kuhusu Mungu. But I hope you realize that there is something special about that testimony. Lakini najua kwamba tumepata kwamba kuna nguvu na kitu special katika hali ya ushuhuda. So my prayer as you listen to these stories about the history of missions. Kwa hivyo maombi yangu kama unaposikia hadithi hii kuhusu hali ya misheni. That indeed even though we are not reading many scriptures. Ijabaoko tuma hatuna maandiko sana. You are actually seeing the hand of God. Lakini tunaona mkono wa Mungu. In history. Katika historia. But the actions of God did not end with the clause of the biblical canon lakini uh, matendo ya Mungu hayakuja katika mambo yale katika Biblia that is why we have the acts of the apostles kuna matendo ya mitume but after the first century they were gone katika karne ya kwanza walikuwa wameondoka beyond that one the, the bible was being rewritten in the lives of holy people zaidi hapo sasa maandiko yakaanza kuandikwa tena watu ambao walikuwa watakatifu and that is the burden that is given to me na huo ndio mzigo ambao nimepatiwa mimi to tell you the story of the hand of god kuambia hadithi ya mkono wa Mungu across the ages katika vizazi na vizazi we left yesterday john wesley tuliwaachia jana mahali pa john wesley We left a man who went to America. Tukaacha mtu ambaye alienda Marekani. And he went with a passion to save the Indians. Na akana na mtazamo wa kwanza kuokoa wale watu wa India. But he was part of the brokenness of the Anglican Christianity of the 18th century. Lakini alikuwa bado na hali ya mwanguo katika moyo wake wa katika kanisa la Anglican wakati huo. He came out of it. Aka, akatoka ndani mwake. With the hope that by being a missionary. Akitumaini ya kwamba akiwa missionary He will be able to save the Indians. Ataweza kuokoa watu wa India. And by explaining the gospel to the heathens as it were, na kuelezea wale mataifa hali ya hii ya injili kama ilivyokuwa. He will be able to save his souls. Pia ataweza kuokoa nafsi yake pia. But that became a terrible failure. Lakini ikakuwa ni mwanguko mkubwa. And as Bill was sharing this morning I was seeing the failure of the disciples. Wakati nilikuwa Bill alikuwa na shiriki asubuhi nikaona pia mwanguko wa wafuasi. As you see it in the failure of John Wesley. Tulipo na katika ya Wesley a failed missionary project ba, maona ambayo ileza kuanguka ya missionary but one day lakini siku moja influenced by the moravians baada ya kushawishika na moravians because moravians were very committed and they were trusting god maana moravians walikuwa wamejukumika na walikuwa wanatumainia mungu and they were meeting in societies throughout europe na walikuwa nakutana na vikundi upande wote upande wote wa Europa. He attended a meeting at Aldersgate in England. Akaenda Aldersgate kukutana katika mkutano mmoja. And he experienced God in a new way. Na akakutana na Mungu katika njia tofauti. And from that time, na kuanzia pale, John Wesley never remained the same. John Wesley hakubaki vile tena. I have always appreciated Wesley's ministry. Nimekuwa wakati wote nikiweza kuona na kuona na kupongeza huduma ya John Wesley. Although he after that he never quite moved out of England that much. Ijapokuwa baada ya hiyo hakuonoka Uingereza za kwa wakati mwingi. And many people say maybe Wesley was not very missional. Na wengi husema kama labda Wesley hakuwa mtu ambaye alikuwa na maono makubwa. But I'm one of the defenders of Wesley as producing a great missional environment. Lakini wengi ambao wanaweza wanaweza wanamtetea Wesley wanasema kwamba alikuwa na maono makubwa pale. John Wesley. John Wesley travel across england alitembea uingereza yote and he went more than 250000 miles na kwenda maili zaidi ya uh, 250000 uh, he preached more than 42000 sermons akahubiri zaidi ya, ya ujumbe uh, 42000 But he understood one thing. Lakini alielewa kitu kimoja. He understood the decay and the rottenness 
of Christianity of his own country. Alielewa kwamba katika nchi yake hali ya injili imeoza. As connected to the reason why those who are in the world without Christianity were also failing. Pia akishikanisha na mali kwa pale nje katika hali ile waomba hata hali ile bado mbovu vile. He began to understand that the reason why the world was not being saved akaanza kuelewa mbona ni kwa nini sasa dunia haijaokolewa is because the anglican christianity and the european christianity at that time ni kwa maana kanisa la kianglikani wakati ule was not living as a revived vital christianity hawakuishi kama wakristo waliovuviwa na wale msukumo ndani the holy spirit was not upon the church roho mtakatifu hakuwa juu ya kanisa so wesley kwa hivyo wesley began to preach across england akaanza kuhubiri uingereza messages of revival ujumbe za uvuvio and he he began organizing actually what were called methodist societies akaanza kwa vikundi ambavyo vinaitwa vinaitwa vikundi vya kimethodisti he organized small groups aka vikundi vidogo vidogo of bible study za kuweza kusoma biblia of seeking god kumtafuta mungu and holy communion na hali ya kushiki meza ya bwana and from that point na kuanzia pale many of his preachers wa, 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 wa hubiri wengi wake began going to prisons wakaanza kwenda katika magereza going to the poor kwenda kwenye masikini wesley himself actually built a number of schools for the poor na pia wesley mwenyewe akajenga mashule kwa ambayo kwa masikini and every time he had a meeting with these preachers na kila wakati alipopatana na hawa wahubiri he always told them aliwaambia mara kwa mara you have nothing hamna chochote but to save souls lakini kuokoa nafsi you have no other business hamna biashara ingine but to save souls lakini kuokoa nafsi that was john wesley huyo ni john wesley The Methodist movement did not start as a church. A Methodist tembo hakuanza kama kanisa. I want you to look at what we mentioned about Antioch and Jerusalem. Tuone Antioch na vitu kama Antioch na Kusi Jerusalem. Antioch was this dynamic missionary movement. Antioch walikuwa watu walikuwa na mtembeo wa msukumo wa kwenda wa missionary. There we get the martyrs of the faith. Tunapata walio teswa kwa sababu ya imani. And later on inspiring the monks who they were not really the the leaders of the church but they were on the side as the revival movement ambao pia walishawishi wale ambao walikuwa ni watawa ama walikuwa kwa mjitenga mpaka wakawa kwamba wanashawishika kupeleka injili Moravians too understood themselves as a church within the church Moravian wakajitambua kama ni kanisa ndani ya kanisa Wesley inspired by the same Moravians Wesley pia akaweza kushawishika na watu wa Moravian Methodism na pia akaelewa watu wa Methodist as not the church kwamba hawa sio hawakuwa kanisa John Wesley actually was a very faithful member and a priest in the Church of England. John Wesley alikuwa mshirika mwaminifu katika kanisa la Kianglikano. In fact, he never wanted the Methodists to move out of the Church of England. Hakutaka Methodists kutoka katika nchi ya Uingereza. There was a there's a statement he made towards the end of his life. It was so hard that Ali, he was almost cursing the Methodists if they ever moved out of the church. Ni kana kwamba kuna matamshi yaitamko wakati mwisho wa maisha yake ni kana kwamba ni kama laana ambao kwamba wa Methodists waitoe katika kanisani. He wanted them to be a revival within the church. Walikataka wao kikundi cha uvuvio katika kanisa ndani ya kanisa. He wanted them to have holiness within the church. Wakuwe na hali ya utakatifu lakini ndani ya kanisa. He wanted them to inspire missions within the church. Walikaza kuchanga moto na kuwatia moyo kanisani wa missionary. John Wesley himself died. John Wesley yeye mwenyewe alikufa. An Anglican priest. Akiwa kasisi wa Kianglikani. But he had begun a movement. Na kila alikuwa ameanza mtembeo. That could not be withstood. Ambao haingeweza kusahimiliwa. By the hierarchy of the Church of England. Kana kanisa la la Uingereza. It this particular movement. Ah mtembeo huu hasa. Call Methodism. Ambao wanajiita Methodism. I know many of us Kenyans When we talk about the Methodist Church, tukisikia kuhusu kanisa la Kimethodisti. You are thinking we thinking of the Methodist Church in Meru. Tunaanza kufikiria kanisa la Kimethodisti upande wa Meru. And indeed those are children as well of John Wesley. Na hakika hao pia ni watoto wa John Wesley. And there are many Methodists even today in in Meru. Na leo bado kuna watoto wa Kimethodisti upande wa Meru. Who are living as by the vitality of holiness of John Wesley. Ambao wanaishi ukamilifu katika msimamo wa utakatifu wa John Wesley. By by and large 
lakini kwa yote most of the methodist in the world today wa methodist katika dunia whether in england either in ingereza or in america ama marekani or even in this country ama katika nchi hii just like the moravians kama moravian they have lost the original vitality wamepoteza msisimko ule wa kwanza But there's something that happens after every hundred years. Na bila kuwa naniambia kwamba katika baada ya miaka 100 kuna kitu inachafanyika. There is something that happens. Kuna kitu hufanyika. That if not taken care of. Kama hatutakuwa waangalifu. Any institution. Katika katika uh, institution yoyote. Any church. Kanisa lolote. After it turns 100 years. Ikifikisha miaka 100. It begins to build monuments. Inaanza kujenga minara na makabati. Inaanza kukufa and it starts dying and there is need for revival na kuna haja kuvuviwa sasa agc africa gospel you remember i mentioned that it was 1915 when johanna ngetik stepped on this soil niliweza kusema kwamba mwaka 1915 mapo angetia kuweka miguu yake hapa we have to be searching our hearts lazima tuanze kuchunguza mioyo yetu taught by history historia ikituongoza and asking ourselves na kujiuliza is what we are doing kila mtu tunafanya continuing the vital spirit of the movement je inazidi katika mtembeo wetu inazidi where, tukazidi where the presence of god is felt in the church ambapo uwepo wa mungu tunahisi uwepo wa mungu kanisani or we are building monuments ama tunatengeneza makavazi sasa hello hello it said when a movement starts wakati mtembeo huo unaanza It started as a struggling small group. Inaanza kama kikundi kidogo ambacho kinachangangana sana. Small group, cell group. Kidogo tu shirika wa nyumbani. Methodism started as a holy club in Oxford University. Methodism ilianza huko Oxford kama kikundi kidogo tu. Very dynamic. Ambao ilikuwa na nguvu sana. But after you are struggling and usually you don't have money, you don't even have many people, you are being hated by so many others. They don't even understand why you exist. Baada ya kungangana hawana watu hawana pesa hata watu wajui mbona muko pale. And then after some time baada ya muda mfupi the whole thing begins to grow. Watu wanaanza kukua. And sometimes it, it cuts even denominational boundaries. Na pia inaenda zaidi ya mipaka ya dini. It becomes a movement. Inakuwa mtembeo mkubwa. And it is so sweet. Na inakuwa nzuri sana. It is sweeping the world. Inafagia na dunia nzima. You go west they are there. Ukienda ukienda kaskazini That is how the Methodists were in England. A Methodists walikuwa hivyo Uingereza. Walikuwa na chipuka kila mahali. They were just sprouting everywhere. They were movement. Walikuwa ni mtembeo mkuu. And then there come another phase, a third phase. Ukaja sasa hasa nafasi nyingine sasa ya tatu. From a struggling group kutoka katika watu wale wanangana movement wakawa mtembeo mkubwa and then come the third phase. Ikaja sasa uso wa tatu sasa hali ya tatu kiwango cha tatu. Phase, katika kiwango cha tatu organizations begin to come. Sasa mpangilio inaanza kuingia. So the first one is a cell. Ya kwanza ilikuwa ni kama ushirika mdogo. The third one is a movement phase which is so sweet and nice. Inaanza kuwa ni mtembeo wa pili ambao ni mzuri sana mtamu sana. The third one ya tatu is called institutionalization. Inaanza kwa kufanya kasa hali ya kikundi kikubwa na And it is necessary it's a very necessary evil as na, I mentioned yesterday in, structures are very necessary kama mipangilio kama ni vyosema jana kama ni amana ni muhimu because a movement without boundaries will will overflow and become fanatical kama kuna mtemea ambao hauna mipaka itaenda na kosa umaana but the problem is lakini shida ni in the institutionalizing phase katika hiyo hali ya kufanya hiyo ikiwa kikundi kizuri kina mpangilio we become very steep structures tunakuwa tu wamekwa wamekwa sana we begin to see our own needs tunaanza kujiona mahitaji yetu si wenyewe that is what peter and john and others were beginning to do ni kama vile petro na yohana walivyoanza kuona problems of the widows of judea kuna wale ambao walikuwa ni mayatima ama mayatima wajane so they needed a structure to support them kwa hivyo walibidi waweke nafasi ya kuweza kuwasaidia so at the institutional phase katika hali ya kufanya iwe kiuna ambao kina mpangilio it is a very dangerous phase ni wakati ambao hapo ni hatari it is a time when you build cathedrals like this ni wakati unajenga jengo kubwa kama hili cathedral those early believers in 1915 here and even across in kericho waumini ambao walikuwa hapa mwaka 1950 ambapo hata hata kericho had no idea hawakuwa na habari that someday kwamba siku moja africa gospel church 
Kanisa la Afrika Gospel Church. Can build you cathedrals like some of these we are building now across the land. Wanaweza jenga makanisa makubwa kama ndio jenga sasa. They were poor and struggling. Walikuwa na ngengana sasa walikuwa maskini. So it is a very dangerous phase. Kwa hivyo ni wakati ambao ni hatari sana. It is a phase controlled by councils. Ni wakati ambao unatongozwa na na, na na vikundi. Controlled by uh, committees. Na pia kuna committee ambazo zina, zinawekwa pale. And yet and then we become no different from what the monks were those pieties of the early days were talking about na hatutakuwa na tofauti na wale watu ambao zamani walikuwa nafanya when they say away with the bishops wanasema kama hataki maaskofu away with papacy hata hataki papa away with councils hata vikundi vya kutatua hataki watu viongozi wa viketi kama hivyo when we reach that moment tukifikia wakati kama huo it's dangerous ni hatari And I think the only thing to save the world at that point na jambo ambalo nafikiri la kuokoa dunia wakati kama huo is ni to continue having ni kuendelea kuwa the spirit of the movement na ule roho wa kutembea wa kuondoka within the institution katika kikundi kile it is not to destroy the councils sio kuharibu vile vikundi vya uongozi or the committees ama vile vikundi vya vya mipangilio or the structures ama mipangilio or the buildings ama majengo it is to bring the vitality of the spirit of god back to the church ni kuleta moto tena wa, wa roho mtakatifu kanisani tena and that is why agc still believes in conferencing like this na ndio tunaamini kama kama agc kongamano kama hii where we bring speakers like bill yuri to speak holiness tunaleta viongozi kama bill yuri kuongea utakatifu and that is why we send you back home tomorrow na tunawatuma kama kesho nyumbani to go and preach holiness mwende mkaweza kuhubiri utakatifu in all the camp meetings katika vikundi katika mikutano yote ya camp all those camps katika kambi zote all those retreats katika hizo mikutano ya retreat all those revival meetings katika mikutano ya uvuvio yote they are intended to keep the spirit of the movement within the institution called the church. Ili kwamba ni kuweza kuweka ile roho mmoja katika kanisani izidi kuendelea. So there's something that the Methodists did. Kuna kitu moja ambacho Methodists walifanya. In their own era, katika wakati kizazi chao, they actually introduce an amazing missionary agenda. Waliweza kutoa agenda yao ya misheni. First of all, la kwanza, the organizational structure of Methodism was amazing. Mpangilio wao wa, wa missionary ulikuwa unashangaza. You know uh, there are many other revivalists in history who never organized the, themselves well. Kuna wale ambao waleta vivyo kitambo kidogo lakini pia hakuwa na mipangilio mizuri. In fact the word methodist is methodical. Kwa hakika kusema methodist kama kumaanisha kama mipangilio. It was started with being methodical in the way you study the word. Ilianza kwa kisabi katika mpangilio katika ile ya kusoma neno. It's methodical in the way you organize yourself. Kwa mipangilio hasa ambapo unapojipanga wewe mwenyewe. I know many AGC pastors will say but we are not methodist bishop you are trying to take us to a people we don't know. Wengine wanasema kama sisi scofizi wa methodist unajaribu turudisha nyuma kwa methodist. Let me tell you. Acha niwaambie. Why we have districts in AGC? Mbona tuko na wilaya ama district hii katika AGC? Why we have those organized camp meetings in AGC? Wengine tuko na hiyo kambi ambazo zimepangiliwa. And all the leadership structures the way we do in AGC. Na mpangilio wenye tumepanga AGC yote kutoka huko mpaka chini. They are inherited from methodist. Tumetoa kwa methodist. In fact it is say that most of the other the other protestant groups followed actually methodism in terms of organizational networks. So we are Methodist. So when you go home today I want you to know we are very methodical and we are Methodists. Hapo kena jamani unajua kwamba sisi Methodist katika mpangilio sisi ni Methodist. So the very fact that they organized kwale kama walivyo walivyo panga mambo yao began to produce great volunteers ilianza kutoa wale ambao walijitoa sasa began to produce individuals who wakaanza support kutu, financially wakaanza kutoa watu binafsi ambao waliweza kusaidia kifedha they had conference methodist conferences we have a conference today because methodists had conferences <laughs> wakaanza kuwa na kongamano tuko na kongamano maana wa methodist walikuwa na kongamano the word a conference in methodism is is just an inward they know it very well 
Uh, that is why AGC is a holiness church believe in annual leaders and pastors conference that is methodical that is where we came from 300 years ago so the organization provided that opportunity to organize for missions as well the associates of John Wesley began to write very encouraging literature supporting mission work around the world. A man by the name Thomas Cook wrote a book with a title Plan of the Society for the Establishment of Mission among the Heathens. It was one of the earliest documents in the Protestant world. Now, I must say this. I have praised the Moravians. But they were a bit inward in their piety, in their holiness. And it is said it's actually John Wesley who took pietism from the Moravians and made it more popular among the masses. So it is the Methodists who began who and all the, the associates of Wesley who began writing literature that were missionary in nature. The other thing that Wesley did he employed in an amazing way lay preachers. Again, where did AGC get the idea that a man can be a businessman who takes his cows to Mulot on Saturday and on Sunday is a pastor with AGC? In the Anglican Church and in the Catholic Church if you are not a priest who has been duly educated you could not be allowed to handle the scriptures but what did Wesley do he released the power of the laity and today AGC as a movement and I know most of you are those you are teachers and you are pastors you are nurses and you are pastors you are doctors and you are pastors you are everything and you are pastors it is because we are children of John Wesley and I think it is a lesson to us that wherever we serve in ministry never curtail the power of the laity, the lay people in your church. And I'm not talking about lay leaders, eh? You know we have, a, we have a category That life of holiness Gives power To go to the ends of the earth That life of holiness Because in essence Wesley said holiness is this it is loving God with all your heart loving God with all your mind and loving God with all your strength and equally because of that vertical holiness loving your neighbor as yourself that kind of an environment produces an amazing missionary Opportunity. Those are people who are living within that confines of the love of God, as Bill Yuri said. And they never keep quiet. A holy dynamite for Jesus will never stay in one place. So, what happened after Wesley? One of the things that Wesley did, of course, 
And uh, many of us Kenyans, we studied William Wilberforce. Wengi wetu kama wa Kenya tulisoma mama William Wilberforce. In, my, in our days, in the 70s and the 80s, in primary school, we were taught that he was a British parliamentarian. Tumama kuzi mamba ya Wilberforce. Miaka ya saa ya miya moja, elfu moja, miya moja sabini. Kukulisi Wilberforce. Kwa mba alikuwa ni mtu wa katika katika hali ya uongozi. That he was a man who actually led the abolishment of slavery. Aliongoza jeshi la watu mwaka. And we do not know the power behind because we studied in primary we were never told why Wilberforce did what he did. Na hatu kuambiwa mbona kwa Wilberforce alifanya hivyo alifanya. He did what he did because he was under the influence of the Wesleyan Holiness Revival. Alifanya hivyo ni kwa sababu alikuwa na msukumo nyuma yake ambao ni wa Wesley. A revival that said if you are a sanctified person you will never allow a fellow human being made in the image of God to be a slave so one of the last letters that uh, John Wesley was writing at, on his deathbed by the way, I have seen the bed where John Wesley died in London. Hakika nimeona katika mji wa London nimeona kitanda ambacho John Wesley aliaga akawa amelala. He died in London and the, the Wesley house in London where he stayed is still there. Maana hapo aliaga akawa kwenye kitanda kile bado kiko mpaka wa leo. And even where he's buried is still there. Maana ile kaburi yake mahali ipo bado ipo. This is this is true. This is something that happened. Hii huu ni ukweli kitu kilifanyika. John Wesley wrote his last letter. John Wesley akaandika barua hii yake ya mwisho. And he was writing to William Wilberforce. Alikuwa anaandikia sa William Wilberforce. That if God has raised you for this. Kama Mungu amekuinua kwa sababu ya hii. No matter how many devils come against you. Hayajalishi pepo ngapi za kuja kinyume na wewe. Stand against them. So William Wilberforce became part of what was called Clapham Sect, a group of parliamentarians in England. Who stood against the evil of slavery? I think uh, uh, Billy would mention to you why he said. Why, why is it in our generation? We no longer see the church transforming communities. You know, personally as an African, one of the reasons why John Wesley's theology endeared to me is that beyond being just a pastor, Zaidi ya kuwa tu mchungaji beyond just being a, a leader in his own community Zaidi ya kuwa kiongozi tu katika watu wao His message was so true and biblical kwamba habari yake ilikuwa ni ya ukweli na kibiblia and for releasing an african person na kwamba kumwachilia mtu wa Kiafrika for, from all kinds of enslavement kwa kutoka katika hali yote ya utumwa and bondages na ufungwa you find that teaching in John Wesley. Unapata mafundisho haya kwa John Wesley. Why are we having women in ministry today? Mbona tunakuwa na akina mama sasa katika huduma leo? Why I mean nearly half of you are pastors and you are women. Katika katika karibu nusu yenu ni wachungaji ni wanawake. It is because of that heritage. Ni kwa sababu ya ile hali ambayo tumetoa katika Wesley. That we that we believe. Kwa maana tunaamini with John Wesley. Na John Wesley. That when God Holy Spirit rests on anybody kwamba roho wa Mungu akitua kwa mtu yoyote it doesn't matter whether you are a slave haijeshi wewe ni mtumwa you are a woman wewe ni mwanamke you are black ama wewe ni mweusi you are white ama ni mweupe you are red ama wewe ni mwekundu god can use you Mungu anaweza kukutumia it is because of the holiness theology ni kwa sababu ya theology ya utakatifu so he wrote one of these his last letters was about the the emancipation of slaves akaandika barua yake ya mwisho kuhusu mambo ya 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 utumwa so there is no wonder Wesley died in 1791 and in 1792 William Carey the one that we know as the father of Protestant missions just a year after Wesley died he founded the Baptist Missionary Society 
And then later the London Missionary Society. Na baadaye ya London Missionary Society. Was formed. Ikaweza kuundwa pale. Church Missionary Society. Church Missionary Society. It's interesting it, it, when you look at the church missionaries which is still in existence up to today. Tunapoangalia church missionary society ambayo iko mpaka leo. You had uh, Pastor Charles mention somebody Pastor one, Charles of the, one, of, one of the around is serving in New Zealand. Ambaye anafanya kazi New Zealand mmoja wao. As a director of CMS. Kama director wa hii sasa CMS. Church missionary society was not coming from the high church. Haikutoka kwenye kanisa ya juu sana. He did not come from the hierarchies of the church. It was birthed out of the Wesleyan revival within the Church of England. And many others came after that. The point I was trying to make is that uh, John Wesley in his revival created an amazing revival movement that led into the founding of mission agencies. Kwamba katika kazi yake alifanya kwamba kuchipuke vikundi kadhaa ambao zilileta uvuvio katika kila mahali. At that time even America was was a mission field. Hata wakati huo Marekani ilikuwa ni uwanja mwingine wa kupeleka mission. Francis Asbury was sent by the Methodists in England to go to America. Francis akatumwa na Uingereza kuwa missionary upande wa Marekani. Many of us are familiar with Asbury College or Asbury University. Wengi tunajua mambo ya Asbury University. I, I went there. Nilienda pale. Bill Yuri was there. Bill Yuri alikuwa pale. Reverend Joyce was there. Reverend Joyce ako pale. And many other missionaries here from here here, here Tenwek. Na Tenwek wengine. They all came from Asbury. Wote wametoka Asbury. Or a number of them came from Asbury. Ama wengi wametoka Asbury. It's because Wesley sent Francis Asbury to America. Ni kwa maana alitumwa Asbury Wesley alitumwa alitumwa missionary pale Marekani. So kwa hivyo a great moment in missions. Huko ni wakati mzuri na mkubwa katika misheni. Uh, the way to understand it is this way. Nataka tuweze kuelewa hivi. Even in Kenya if you if you want these are what we call the the classical what we now call the mainline Protestants in Kenya. Hao wana ambao tunaita kama makanisa yale ambao ni ni, ni kama ya, ya, ya mwanzo mmoja ambao ni makubwa yale ya mwanzo kabisa. Are children of Wesley's earlier revivals in the 18th century. Hao wana watoto wa karne ya 19 ya 19 wa Wesley. I think the method, the Wesley Methodists came to Kenya in 1860s as part of that. Walikuja mwaka 1880 Of course you, 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 the Anglican Church founded by CMS came out of that classical that classical Protestant mission. Anglican walitoka pale kwenye ile ile makanisa pale wale ambao walikuwa ni kanisa zile kubwa pale juu. We call them in in history of mission classical Protestant missions. Wanaitwa classical mission uh, mission They, they, they came before the ones that we call evangelical walikuja kabla ya evangelicals they are the mainline uh, mainline protestants today wao ndio tunaita kama ni wale ambao ni hakika wa mwanzo kabisa the next group which i am going now as i go to was finishing wakafuata kundi cha pili ambacho ni is where we come in mali tunaingilia sasa and the, re, the way we come in na jinsi ambavyo tunaingilia sisi we came in through the holiness movement Tuliingia kupitia mtembeo wa utakatifu. As I mentioned earlier, kama nilivyosema hapo awali, after about 100 years, baada ya miaka kama 100, John Wesley died in 1791. John Wesley died in 1791. By around mid 1800s, kabla miaka ya 1800. That revival in England had gone down. Uvuvio uliokuwa Uingereza ulikuwa umeshuka chini. And liberalism has come in. Na watu ambao ni waasa ni watu waasi wakaanza kuinuka. That revival in America had gone down. Marekani pia uvuvio wao ulikuwa umeshuka chini. And liberalism had set in. Bwana waasi wakaanza kuinuka tena. But God never leaves himself without a testimony for every generation. Lakini Mungu kwa kila kizazi hawachi bila kuwa na mmoja katikati ya kizazi. The unfortunate thing kwamba ilikuwa ni mzuri pale is that the era i am going into kwamba maana hapo sasa naingia sasa is an area and an era that coincides with colonialism here in africa ni mahali hapo sasa tutaanza kuona sasa ukoloni na sasa hali ya hiyo na and many times missionaries were mistaken na wakati mwingi missionaries waliweza kuchukua vibaya 
And for me this is the way I look at it. Na mimi natazama hivi. As I see the trends and the influence from the Bible all through the Matthias, the Moravians, all through I see a different agenda of the missionaries. Ninapotazama kuanzia pale juu mpaka wakati huu katika ukoloni na mambo yote naona picha tofauti kabisa. In this place Mahali hapa tulipo. I distinguish myself from the other African scholars. Sasa najitofautisha na wafunzi wanafunzi wengine wote. Who bash the missionary movement as part of colonialism. Ambao wanasema kwamba wanaweka kikundi kimoja wale ambao ni wakoloni na wasomi wale. If you are looking at what Wesley is doing and oh. is releasing the African people. Ukiona vinyama hivi anafanya ni kama anawaachilia sasa ambao watu ambao ni wangozi nyeusi. Slavery ended because of revival. Aha, hali ya kufanywa mateka ukaisha kwa sababu ya mambo ya uvuvio. All kinds of things in Africa, the person who told well for a, for an African person was a missionary. Mhm. Mm Yule ambaye alieleza vizuri kabisa hali hiyo ya missionary ali missionary uh, uh, wa Afrika. Were they mistaken sometimes? Je, waliweza kuchukua vibaya wakati mwingine? Yes. Hakika ndio. Were there times that they confused their own culture to be identical with the gospel? Wakati mwingine walichukua tamaduni zao kulinganisha na injili. Yes. Ni kweli. Are there some of the African values and African things that were never that were not bad in themselves but they were drawn away? Kuna mambo ambayo yalikuwa ni ya Afrika ambayo hayakuwa mabaya lakini yalitolewa? Yes. Kweli. Did the missionaries use the opportunity of the expanding European empires to spread the gospel? Je, walitumia nguvu zao za, za Europa kuja kueneza injili hapa? Yes. Ni kweli. Are some of their literature sounding very uh, negative on issues of racism? Mm -hmm. Je, mambo mafundisho wakati ile kwa inaleta hali ambayo katika kuna utofauti katika rangi? Yes. Ni kweli. But lakini when you study them, lakini ukaweza kuwasoma vizuri. If there is one human soul kama kuna nafsi ya mtu mmoja if there are a group of people kama kwa kikundi cha watu who did not come to exploit africa ambao hawakuja kwa watumie vibaya wa afrika who did not come to take any wealth from among us ambao hawakuja kuchukua utajiri katikati yetu whose graves some of them are around us wale ambao wengine wao makaburi yao yuko karibu na sisi who educated the africans wale ambao waliweza kuelimisha mu afrika who even our leaders of the the so called independence movement wale ambao pia ni wa vikundi ambavyo vilikuwa vya uhuru Kenyatta was educated in a, in, a, in, a, in a mission school pia Kenyatta rais wetu alielimishwa katika shule kama hiyo sio huyu ni ile ya kwanza yule mwanzilishi rais wetu wa kwanza wa nchi did he go to scott missionary uh, school uh -huh. president I, moi na moi pia where did he go to school alienda shule wapi AIM Kapatonjo. Ya Misheni. AIM Kapsabet. Ya Misheni. Some of the leading lights even where we live here. Hata hapa kwenye tuko sasa hivi wale ambao wanaongoza. In the 80s and 90s Kipkalia Kones was a very powerful figure. Mhm. Mm kama Kipkalia Sendo Epani kuna mani wa nguvu sana upande huu. Where did he go to school? Alisomea wapi? Tenwek High School. Hapa hapa hapa. And he was a child of uh, mtoto wa nani? Of Baliaj grandchild of chief simeon baliach one mm -hmm. of our reverends isn't it ni kweli the missionaries wa missionary thought so well about us waliwaza mazuri sana kutuhusu now between 1880 kwanza mwaka wa 1880 and 1930 and 1930, na 1930 sasa was an amazing i call it a golden era of missions ni mama ni wakati ambao nilikuwa ni wakati kama wa kidhahabu hivi kizazi cha katika mission This is an area where I studied and I can say so much myself but I want to summarize in a few minutes what Nilis I need to say. Nilisoma sana kuhusu mambo haya kidogo kuhusu mambo hayo. As I mentioned revival went down. Nilisema kwamba hali ya uvuvio ilishuka chini after about 100 years. Baada ya miaka 100 hivi. Then in 1867 katika miaka wa 1867 in fact actually started a bit earlier. Ni kama ilianza kitambo kidogo with a woman by the name Phoebe Palmer. Wakati mwanamke Phoebe Palmer. He had Tuesday prayer meetings uh, in early 19th century in New York. Alikuwa New York katika mkutano wa maombi. She and her husband who was a doctor. Yeye na mume ambaye alikuwa ni daktari. They were professionals. Walikuwa wamefuzu katika kazi hiyo. Started calling for Tuesday prayer meetings 
in seeking for holiness. Wakaanza kuita mikutano pamoja ya kuweza kutafuta utakatifu. It started as I said it was a cell group. Ilianza kama ushirika wa nyumbani. And it was struggling. Na walikuwa wanangangana. But soon people begin to come. Lakini baada watu wakaanza kuja They came as business people. Wakaya kama watu wa biashara. They came even as bishops in New York. Wakaya kama maaskofu pia huko New York. And soon na baada ya kidogo they began what was called the camp meetings. Wakaanza sasa ina maana tunaita sasa ni vikundi vya camp. And these camp meetings were intended to promote holiness. Na hii ilikuwa imekusudiwa kuweza kuitia moto sasa utakatifu. In fact to begin with they were not really looking at missions wakiangalia mwanzo hawakuwa anaangalia mambo ya misheni in fact when when they started introducing mission agenda it was like no we want to seek god we want to seek holiness walipoanza kuleta mambo kama ile ya misheni kana kwamba ah hapana tunataka tunataka tutafute tu takatifu we don't want committees about missions and things tutaki kama mambo zinazofuzina kuhusu mambo ya misheni tunataka mambo ya imani it was takatifu It is something like you never know as AGC people. Ndio ambacho ni kama hatujui kabisa kama watu wa AGC. One of my greatest dream has been someday. Ni kwamba ndoto yangu kubwa ni kwamba siku moja God can help us somewhere in the forest somewhere where you come ground where we come to hear from the beginning of the week up to the end of the week holiness peke yake. Ni kwamba Mungu atatutengea tu mahali atakane kwa msitu mahali fulani uwanja mkubwa mahali mapo kwa wiki mzima tutakuja hapa tusikie utakatifu peke yake. People get sanctified na watu wapata utakaso lives are turned around completely maisha yanaweza kubadilishwa kabisa so in 1867 they met they met in Vineland New Jersey hayo mwaka 1887 huko Jersey there's a first encampment to promote holiness kukawa na kuna mmoja ambao alikuwa anakutia moyo hali ya utakatifu mark that date kumbuka hiyo tarehe if you are a proper agc person kama wewe ni mtu wa agc kabisa you got to mark that date hakisha umeshika hiyo tarehe because in so many ways that is your beginning maana wakati hiyo hapo ndio mwanzo wetu in fact they formed an, they formed an association waliweza kuunga kikundi called the national holiness camp meeting association for the promotion it was a long name for the promotion of holiness that, that name kikundi cha utakatifu kikaundwa pale nakumbuka <laughs> hiyo the national camp meeting association for the promotion of holiness ni mrefu kweli <laughs> It is a very long name, isn't it? But keep that. It or thereabout. At least I have an understanding. There was a, a group that was formed in 1867. Kwa tu kama kulikona kikoni mato kiliundwa mwaka elfu moja mia nane sitini na saba. That is in America. Hapo ni Marekani. Remember also Methodism in England is going down. Kumbuka kama pia Methodism pale ingereza bado inenda chini. The original Methodism is going down. Methodism inaenda chini ambayo ni kwa hiyo. The in America is going down. Marekani pia wanashuka chini. And so God is raising up a generation. Mungu sasa anaanza kuinua kizazi. And 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 and, and this group in America. Na hii kundi ambayo kilikuwa Marekani. Inspired the Methodists in England. Wakaanza kuweza kuatia moyo sasa waliokuwa Uingereza. And out of the English holiness revivals. Na katikati watu wa wa Uingereza came William Booth pakaja William Booth the founder of the Salvation Army ambaye ni founder wa jeshi la wokovu inspired by the same spirit of God moving across Atlantic wakati ambapo anashawishiwa na roho wa Mungu anapo anapotembea katika Atlantic now there was another group that became a bit more calvinistic kulikuwa na yule ambacho bado alikuwa na bado ni wa calvinisti but they were still inspired by the holiness revivals from wesley wesley and wall lakini bado mvuvio utakatifu wa wesley bado ukawaguza this is the kesic movement hasa hii ilikuwa ina ni mtumbeo wa kesic which started in kesic england and was running a kesic convention for many many years ukaza uingereza na ukafanya kazi kwa miaka miaka mingi mingi so out of that movement zaidi ya hiyo utembeo huo I must say this na lazima niseme hivi The classical Protestant missions wale ambao walikuwa ni wa Protestant London Missionary Society walikuwa wale wa Uingereza wale wa London Baptist Missionary Society Baptist the CMS na CMS Most of them was reaching actually along the shoreline Wengi wao walikuwa wanapitia katika ufua wa bahari Yeah you come you just end at the African continent around the Congo around the South Africa the, around uh, areas around Mombasa and they only witness very much mainly around the shorelines How waleta kutoka katika ufuo wa bahari kama vile Congo wanaenda Afrika Kusini wanaenda Mombasa walikuwa na hudumu katika ufuo wa bahari But what happened when 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 now holiness was preached 
Nini lilifanyika wakati ambapo utakatifu ulihubiriwa? When people want to seek the face of God. Wakati watu walitafuta uso wa Mungu. When the church was filled with the Holy Spirit. Wakati kanisa lijazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. As I said this a movement. Nasema kama ulikuwa ni mtembeo. It started with Methodism. Ulianza na Methodism. But it penetrated the Presbyterians. Lakini kaingia wa Presbyterians. In fact this is where you get the church called CNMA. The Una, Christian and Missionary Alliance Church. Unapata kaisa CRMA. They were Presbyterians. Walikuwa wa Presbyterian. AB Simpson their founder was a Presbyterian. Alikuwa bado ni Presbyterian aliye aliye But holiness has no boundary. Lakini utakatifu huko na mipaka. The Holy Spirit has no boundary. Roho mtakatifu hana mipaka. It affected them. Aliweza kuwafikia. Baptists were affected. Wa Baptists wakafikiwa. Nobody was left behind. Hakuna aliye wacha nyuma. It was a movement. Ulikuwa ni mtembeo mkubwa. And it because it was loving God with the totality of your heart. Maana ilikuwa ni kumpenda Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. These the missionaries that came out of this earth began to say we will not only reach the shorelines we will go inland and therefore China inland mission you have heard about China inland mission they wanted to go into the deeper recesses of China China. Africa inland mission. Aha, uh -huh. Africa inland mission. And many people tell me, oh, AIC is not holiness. The, the reason why I believe AIC and AGC do get along pretty well. Despite the fact that most of their missional leadership were Calvinists. They were actually influenced within the large holiness revivals. That is why when Peter Cameron Scott ndipo sasa Peter Cameron Scott with our own Willis Hotchkiss wakiwa na Hotchkiss ambaye ni wetu you even wonder where they met Unashangaa walipatana wapi? When they came in 1895. Au katika 1895. They never stayed in Mombasa. Hawakukaa Mombasa. They came all the way to Kilungu. Wao mpaka Kilungu. And soon they were in Nandi. Wakapatikana tena Nandi. And soon they were in Litain here Wakaja in Kilungu. Wakaja Litain hapa Kericho. Why? Kwa nini? The concept was inland mission. Kwa maana walikuwa wanataka kuingia ndani, huduma za kuingia ndani. Yani God has saved you. Kama Mungu amekuokoa. And has sanctified you. Amekutakasa. There is no Place you cannot go. Hakuna mahali wezi enda. So then you go deep inland because you have received the depth of the love of God. Okipata undani wa mungu undani yako, unaingia sasa undani. And even this has a lesson for us today. Na hii ni fundisho kwetu pia siku ya leo. When you are deep in the love of God. Wakati uko ndani umezama katika upendo wa mungu. Your vision goes beyond where you see on that hill as if the sun actually sets over there say, that is your own wall upendo wako unaenda zaidi ya misho ambayo unaona kama jua ina dunia yake inafika pale kwenye mimo ya milima it will take you beyond itakupeleka zaidi ya hapo where are we tuko wapi 1910 mwaka 1910 if you remember that group that that uh, group that was calling itself the national camp meeting association for promoting holiness in america ukumbuka kama kuna potema jina murefu hiyo sasa one day you remember they were they were still within the Methodist church. And in New York there was a very liberal board. The, the, the Methodist board of mission in New York was very liberal. Which was supposed to be the sending body for their missionaries. They began to say no. We cannot continue using this board. It has drifted away from the gospel. Only concerned with social work but not the redemption of souls. So the, the holiness people within the Methodist Church in America began to say, I like, I, I like the way they put it. They said, one they said, if, if, if we need holiness in America, therefore, even others across the world need holiness. And if, if, if the heathen need salvation, they need full salvation. They need the whole gospel. In fact, 
Hakika where we got this vision statement mali dupata a, 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 a vision yetu there, there is a, a book kuna kitabu by a man by the name W W Carey It is the history of the National Holiness Missionary Society. Na hiyo ni National Holiness Missionary Society. And on top of that book, na juu ya kitabu kile, he had a phrase. Alikuwa ameandika maandiko. It is written the whole gospel for the whole world. Imeandikwa tu the injili yote injili yote kwa duniani duniani. It was around midnight. Ilikuwa ni katikati ya usiku. I was with uh, our heads of departments in Ilikuwa na viongozi wa idara mbalimbali. I think that was 2012. Ilikuwa mwaka 2012. And we were praying and searching. Na tulikuwa tunaomba na kutafuta. Right here in greenhouse. Hapa 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 tena kwa greenhouse. In the middle of the night. Kati, m- usiku katikati. God revealed to us. Mungu akatufunulia. That this was the whole gospel. Kwamba hii hii neno kwamba injili yote. Which is gospel inclusive of holiness. Ambao ni injili ambayo for the whole world kwa dunia dunia yote should be the vision of hcc lazima iwe ndio maono kabisa ya then we said because we are a church we are not a mission hizi si watu si mission so we just added tukaongeza the whole church tukaongeza kanisa lote taking the whole gospel injili yote to the whole world katika duniani kote if you want to know the history of this mission statement that is where it comes from ukitaka kujua historia basi ilitoka hapo It is rooted in the history of HEC. Imewekwa mizizi katika historia ya It is rooted in holiness. Imewekwa mizizi katika utakatifu. It is rooted in where our church came from. Imewekwa mizizi kwenye kanisa limetoka. But very interesting you'll find it is also a major Losen statement. Na pia ukitia mkazo Losen, Losen. You remember that this Losen for evangelization of the world. The, the movement started by Billy Graham in 1974. Ni mtamaa mbona unaanza na Graham miaka ya zamani? But we do not borrow from them. Lakini hatukomba kutoka pale. But amazingly this statement has been a blessing to us. Lakini ujumbe ule umekuwa ni wa baraka kwetu. Time is not enough to tell you how it has been so much of use as we network with others around the world. Wakati hautoshi kueleza jinsi ambavyo imekuwa ni ya baraka kwetu sisi kueneza habari hii. Because we find this as the desire of the church of Jesus Christ beyond AGC. Kwamba hii ni tamaa na tamanio la kanisa zaidi ya mipaka ya AGC. That is when A WGM or National Holiness Missionary Society started. Hao ndio wakati ambapo WGM ama National Holiness Mission Society ilianza. We can stretch a little bit. Tunaweza jinyosha kidogo. You you do your exercise or whatever. Now you are <laughs> You are very missional people. Ah <laughs> tunawa missionary sana. You are very missional people. Watu wa missionary yao. Every time you remember Reverend Ebe remember missions isn't it? Na ukiona Ebe unakumbuka misheni. Pole. You can go this way and go this way. <laughs> very nice. Uh, and vizuri sana. Um I hope we as Salvation Army and others who are here in AGC Sisi jeshi la wokovu na sisi ambao tumekusanyika hapa na AGC pia You begin to realize Naanza kugundua ya kwamba You can actually trace a thread Unaweza fuata kamba from where we are as a church Yetu kama kanisa all the way to the early church Mpaka kwenye kanisa la kale la zamani Because all those movements Ana mitambio hiyo yote influence one another very directly and sustain the gospel to our generation national holiness missionary society national mission society became world gospel mission in 1954 mwaka 1954 ikafanyika WGM You can see even the name National Holiness it was just coming from the original name of the camp meeting association Ilikuwa inatoka pia ile jina kwenye mkutano wa camp And um, WGM when it became WGM in 1954 Wakati mwaka 1954 wakati WGM ilifanyika It was not like holiness was lost Haiko kwamba utakatifu umepotea That middle name in WGM and middle name in AGC Yama ilikuwa ni katikati katika AGC hiyo katikati. Articulated properly to include holiness. Imewekwa pale kama kusimamia utakatifu. 
And I have done my best in the last few years as God has enabled me to teach. Nimefanya vilivyo Mungu amenisaidia kwa kufundisha. That every time you remember the gospel in AGC. Nikikumbuka mambo ya injili katika AGC. It's not a diluted gospel. Sio nyinyi ambao imeweza kuongezwa maji zaidi. It's not a shallow gospel. Sio ambao iko iko juu sana. It is heavy duty gospel ni nzito iliyozama vizuri that includes the fullness of the holy spirit kama inaongeza kuz mambo ya roho mtakatifu as it were among the, the apostles kama alivyokuwa katika wakati wa mitume and across the years na katika baada ya miaka for them that were able to reach out in missions kwa wale ambao waliweza kuwafikia wengine katika mission just one one note to say there is something i i love about missions and students kuna kitu ambacho ninapenda kupitia wanafunzi na misheni in that ya kwamba right from the revivalism kuanzia wakati uvuvio nearly in every era kwa kila kizazi John Wesley and his group were students in Oxford John Wesley walikuwa ni wanafunzi uh, pale Oxford when they started when they started the holy club walipoanza kikundi cha utakatifu and he started even before he went to America and failed na kaanza hata kabla hajaenda Marekani they were students walikuwa ni wanafunzi come to the 19th century kuja katika karne ya 19 um There was a prayer meeting in 1806. Kulikuwa na mkutano wa maombi wa mwaka 1906 that led to the American Missionary Society. Ambao ilipelekea kikundi hicho kufanyika. It was called the Haystack meeting. Iliitwa hizo mkutano wa Haystack. The students were going to pray by hay. They, they, they were cutting hay and they went out to the field. I think in the eastern part of the US. Walikuwa katika ile nyasi ambayo inakatwa ile nyasi ya ile nyasi ya ya ngombe ya kufunga. Walikuwa na kuomba kwenye hizo uwanja kama huo. And that out of that desire for God. Na kutoka katika ile tamaa ya kutaka Mungu. Was birthed a missionary movement. Ukazaliwa kikundi cha sasa. You come all the way to the late 19th century. Unakuja katika zaidi mpaka miaka ya karne ya 19. There was an amazing group that rose from that time called Student Volunteer Movement. Kuna kikundi ambacho kilichipuka cha wanafunzi cha kujitolea cha wanafunzi. Founded by somebody by the name Mot. Ambao jina lake alikuwa mwanzilishi kwa anaitwa Mot. I only want to underscore this uh, my brothers and sisters. Nataka mweze kushika tu hii ndugu na dada zangu. So that you realize ili mkumbuke ya kwamba the energies of our young people kwamba nguvu za vijana wetu needs to be revitalized for missions. Lazima ziweze kuelekezwa kwenye misheni. Somebody I think it was our brother Charles mentioned about CD Stud. Kuna mtu ambaye nafikiri Charles asema kuhusu CD Stud. Or was Bill Yuri I've forgotten. Ama ni Yuri. And mentioned that he was one of the missionaries that came to Africa. Amasema ni mshona ambaye alikuja Afrika. In fact he used to pass through Kenya going to the Congo. Alikuwa anapitia Kenya akielekea Congo. Again even the name of him, his mission was indicative of that depth of heart. Hata hata katika kazi yake mshona alikuwa ndani kinini kwa moyo wake. See this that was among the cricket seven students from Cambridge University. Kutoka Cambridge walikuwa ni katikati wanafunzi ambao walikuwa ni saba katika misheni. And he founded what was known as the Heart of Africa Mission. Na wakauna kiuna ambayo inaitwa kwamba moyo wa Afrika, misheni ya moyo wa Afrika. Why the Heart of Africa? Kwa nini moyo wa Afrika? It was to go deep. Maana ilikuwa iende ndani. It was to go deep into the heart of Africa. Iende ndani kabisa katika moyo wa Afrika. The inland concept katika hali ya kuingia ndani ili mawazo ya kuingia ndani Most of these missions were faith missions Hawa wengi walikuwa ni missionaries ambao walikuwa na imani They went by faith Walienda kwa imani They were not supposed to go around raising money Hawakupitia huku wakichangisha pesa These are very very difficult moments for missionaries coming from the western world Huu ulikuwa ni wakati mgumu sana kwa missionaries walio kutoka ngambo Africa was known as the, the land of no return And it was known as the white man's graveyard. Na ilijulikana pia kwamba ni kaburi ya mzungu. Some of them came to Africa. Walikuja Afrika. And they were carrying uh, their belongings in coffins. Na walikuwa na vitu vyao wamefungia kwenye jeneza. Why? Kwa nini? They believe that I go no coming back. Waliamini kama ninaenda lakini sitarudi. So when this box has finished the duty of carrying my belongings to that part of the world, kwa hivyo jeneza hilo likiisha hivyo mali ambayo yamebebea ndani, I will be buried in there. Nitaweka kwa hiyo jeneza na nitazikwa. It was total commitment. Ilikuwa ni kutolea muhanga kabisa. Coming to inland Africa. Kuja katika mahali pa Afrika ndani. And our world was so dark in sin. Na dunia yetu ilikuwa imepotea sana katika dhambi. Sometimes when I I travel around Bomet, I I just say God Glory be to your name. Wakati natembea Bomet nasema kwamba utukufu kurejewe Mungu. Just between there is a church between between Dulweta Mosonic 
where can uh, Joanna preach Anbometa on Kutoka Imani to, 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 kwenye... the, uh, to, to Bomet Imani Fellowship. Kwa, kwa, la mjini, la Imani, la AGC. It is about, is it less than five kilometers? Ne, ne, kama kilometer ma, ama zipungue. There are five AGC churches. Kuna makanisa matano katikati. Nearly one in every kilometer. Ne, kama kanisa kilometer moja, kanisa moja, kilometer moja, And they kanisa, are all full. Na zote zimeja. The darkness that has been chased in this land is amazing. Africa was dark. Africa ilikuwa na giza. Let us celebrate the gospel. Tuweze kufurahia injili. That God has brought to our land. Ambao ameshaleta katika nchi yetu. In Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. But it came um, in the midst of huge sacrifices. Lakini ilikuja kwa watu waliojitoa sana. And some of those who sacrificed were students. Na waliojitolea sana siku hizo wengine walikuwa ni wanafunzi. When when uh, World Gospel Mission was founded in in 1910, wakati WGM iliweza kufanywa pale mwaka 1910, they first went to China. Wakaenda China kwanza. And they struggled a lot with China. Na wakangangana sana China. And then Badae, another group of students kikundi cha pili cha wanafunzi one of them i have his name mwingine niko na jina lake and i admire those two heroes na nataka mashujaa hawa na napenda mashujaa hawa wengi these are bob or robert smith ni robert smith and virgil kickpatrick na virgil kickpatrick they were both students at asbury uh, college walikuwa ni wanafunzi asbury college in 1920s wa, mwaka 1920 during a revival meeting and again it's always about holiness seeking wakati god wakati wa uvuvi wakitafuta mungu katika mkutano god called them to come to africa mungu akawaita waje afrika and they realized that the mission agency that would bring them to africa is the national holiness missionary society world gospel mission na wakagundua kwamba kikundi cha kuwatuma afrika ilikuwa ni wgm and um, WGM had no work and no intention to start work in Africa. Now, Just think about the 1500 of you. And think about the influence of AGC in this part of the world. If those young men kama wale watu wawili wachanga in college wakiwa chuo never responded to the promptings of the holy spirit kama hawangesikia sauti na kutii sauti ya roho mtakatifu where would we be today tungekuwa wapi leo and so they drove a very old beetle an old vehicle wakaendesha gari ambayo ni mzee and they went all the way to chicago wakana mpaka mji wa chicago marekani that is why i keep telling you if the if the gospel never perish from chicago to tenwek it cannot perish when it goes to nairobi The headquarters of WGM at that time was in the city of Chicago. The board was meeting. And you know we elders when we meet Sometimes we are stubborn. We don't want young men's things. Uh, what are these young men telling us? We have been in ministry for years. We know this thing. So the elders who are meeting. Hey, wait a minute. There is always among these grassy old men or and women meeting in councils. There is always one that loves young people. Katikati ambao ni wazee ambao wako na nywele nyeupe hawa. Kwa hiyo kikundi hiyo kikundi kuna patikana tu mtu mmoja mzee ambaye anapenda hawa watu wachanga. Mmoja. They went driving an old beetle. Wakaenda na ile gari ya aina Volkswagen ya kizamani. Somewhere along the road. Katikati ya barabara. The police told them. Police wakawaambia. This thing is too slow. Hii hii gari inaenda polepole sana. It had no windshield. You know the the windshield? Aha. Kio ya mbele. Haina kio mbele hapa. And they told them remove this thing out of the road. <laughs> But the young men never removed it. Lakini And they went all the way to Chicago. When they reached there, walipofika pale, the elders were meeting. Wazee walikuwa nakutana. Young men, vijana wachanga, vijana umekuja. Where are you from? Umetoka wapi? Asbury College. Unatoka Asbury. Eh, hey, what's your story? Muko na hadithi gani? God is calling us. Mungu anatuita. We want to go to Africa. Tunataenda Afrika. And we believe. Na tunaamini. National Holiness Mission Society. 
kwamba wgm is the is the body that god god you know go young men can say god has called them ya tata anasema kama mungu ametuita mungu ametuita and uh, the chairman uh, the leaders said okay young men viongozi wakasema we have listened to you tumewasikiliza we are struggling with china tunajaribu kuingana na china kwa sasa no money hatuna pesa you know there is always that word no money hatuna pesa Councils like to say they have no money. Nasema kwamba kazi ikasema kama hakuna pesa. We cannot start China. We cannot start Africa. Hatuwezi anza Africa tuko China. So the young men were a bit discouraged. Vijana wale walikuwa kwa kakua I don't know how many days they took from Wilmo to Wilmo Kentucky to Chicago. Zidi chukua safari ya siku ngapi kutoka mpaka kufikia Chicago. But it was not anyway. Lakini you go and then come tomorrow we'll tell you what we'll have decided. Mkuje kesho tuambia tumeamua nini? Mkuje kesho. One of them by the name Woodford Woodford I believe Tate. Okay, Woodford. Moja wao. They this kind of mzee who see the vision in young men. Amba mzee mmoja katika ambao hawa naona maono katika vijana. He followed them outside. Akawafuata nje. Held them and embraced them and told them young men. Akawakumbatia akawaambia wa vijana. I know. Ninajua. The Lord Mungu will swing the door open in Africa. Atafungua mlango hivi karibuni Afrika. And you will be among the first. Na utamtakuwa ni katikati ambao wa kwanza to go. Kuenda. Be encouraged. Mujitie moyo. So as the board meeting those days let us the board used to wait for letters until they have a meeting then they open all the letters. Walikuwa na ngoja wakati kuna mkutano hapo na hata barua zote kufungua. And um, a letter was opened. Hasa barua ikafunguliwa. It came from Des Moines, Iowa. I hope I'm saying it properly. I learned it Des Moines. It's a very difficult uh, word to pronounce in in my language. Des Moines, Iowa. It came from Iowa, from a lawyer. The letter. Barua ikatoka kutoka mahali fulani, mimi Des Moines. Iowa. Say it was from Iowa. Mhm. A lawyer had had a good case. Kuna hakima alikuwa ameandika kesi nzuri. And he earned uh, a lot of money. Na alikuwa amepata pesa za mingi. And he took part of it. Na akachukua sehemu ya zile pesa. $5000. This is 1927. Hii ni mwaka wa 1925. It is even 90 years today. Ni miaka 90 leo. Eh? Sio 1927. Mhm. Mm so he took Akachu. they read the letter. Wakasoma barua. The letter read. Barua ilikuwa inasema. Here is a check of $5000. Hapa kuna cheki ya dola 1500 when the national holiness missionary society is ready to open work in africa na wakati ambapo watu hawa wa wgm watakuwa tayari kufungua kazi ya misheni ya afrika use it tafadhali mtumie amen amen that's very emotional to me it inakuwa ni hali ambayo inaniaguzi you know, moyo sana no more argument hasa hatu atuongei tena 5000 dollars in 1927 imagine 1000 dola 1500 miaka hiyo i don't know how much that would be sio ilikuwa ni pesa kiasi gani sasa my friends the rest is history yeye fata ni historia i am standing on a place where robert smith stood ni nasimama kwa imani ambapo robert smith alisimama right here in tenwek hapa 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 tenwek Just ask yourself. Abujiulize. Many of you are chairman of councils. Ninyi wengine wenu ni mwenyekiti wa vikundi hivi vya uongozi. You are chairman of a local chai council. Wewe labda ni mwenyekiti katika kikundi cha uongozi kanisani. District. Ama katika district. Area. Ama area. Central. Ama huko central office. Region. Ama katika region. Wherever you are. Popote ulipo pale. Always when you meet. Wakati popote mnakutana. As God and Lord let us not get it wrong. Waambia Mungu kwamba tuweze usiweze kuipata vibaya. Because you can be a stumbling block. Maana unaweza kuwa kikwazo of the work of God. Kwa kazi yake Mungu. If WGM got it wrong in 1927. Kama wangeipata vibaya miaka hiyo World Gospel Mission. We would not be here today. Hatungekuwa hapa leo. We are here today. Tuko hapa leo. Because they got it right. Kwa maana tulipata hakika ile ukweli. When you go home. Ukiona nyumbani. Look at the schools around you. Angalia mashule yao jirani kwenu. And look at the 
pastors in Bible colleges. Look at those young men and women who are desirous to get into ministry. As a council, Kama council. as a leader, Kama kiongozi. don't stand on their way. Open the doors for them. For you never know Maana haujui. where God will take them. Mungu wapi. Amen. Amen. So, Kwa hivyo, let me take us back a little bit. Na nyuma kidogo. Summarize. Na tamati. Willis Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss, Willis. Grew out of that holiness revival. Akakuwa katika ile uvuvio wa utakatifu. I have mentioned that he came first in 1895. AIM. Akiwa katika AIM. Later on, baadaye, he began to see that Africans akaanza kuona Afrika needed not just the gospel as we know it as saving souls. But a holistic ministry. And so he came up with the concept of industrial missions. He was a Quaker. The Quakers are just like the Salvation Army. Some of us don't understand them. The Quakers the evangelical Quakers in Western Kenya started in Kaimosi. You know who the founder was? Willis Hotchkiss. Willis Hotchkiss. Hotchkiss. But the Nandis were very terrible people those days. Very Nandis, if the Nandis here. Nandi Polina Kina Lukan Watambali Kuani Shida Kabis Wakatu, Alkuan Watambana, Kinga Malia, Haliaka. That is the time of the building of the railway. Wakata Lady Kuina Weko. And the Nandis used to go ransack down the Kaimosi. Kaimosi Kochini. I pray that more Nandis will go to Kaimosi for the gospel in our generation. Not the other generation that went to fight. So Hojikis got the vision of starting work among the Kalenjins. But this was a time of resistance, the Nandi resistance against the colonial government. And Hojikis was told there are a bit milder, same group of people, but they are a bit mild. On the other side of Tinderet Forest. And these are people called the Lumbwa people. These are the Kipsigis people. So Hojikis found himself crossing River Kipchorian in 1905. He came. Akaja. In fact, Kipchorian lived, that is Nyando River. It used to be, it used to be huge. They were crossing a, a tree that had fallen across the river. A very dangerous crossing. If Ojigis never got it right, we would not have had Lemegu Arabosan. We would not have had Johanna Ngetich. People like Solomon Simwala. And those elders who were brought and discipled at Chagaik in Kericho. But Hochikis came. So, because he came, remember this is early, eh? the story I gave you about the young men going to Chicago, this is this that time as those young men were preparing to go, there was something else going on. It was called Lumbo Industrial, Industrial Mission. Which was because of because Hochikis started in Kipkelion in 1905. But nevertheless, it's a continuation of the holiness revivals. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we get Johanna Ngetich. Tunapata Johanna Ngetich. Who was sent here in 1915. Laura Traxel in her book, The Kindle Fires in Africa, says, Johanna Ngetich Johanna Ngetich was a strong, pervasive influence of a black man full of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Alikuwa mtu mwenye nguvu alikuwa alikuwa na hali ya kuathiri wengine watu weusi ambao alikuwa alikuwa amejawa na moto wa Roho Mtakatifu. Joanna by name. 
Johanna kwa jina. You know the, well Dr. Langat mentioned Professor Langat mentioned yesterday that uh, Dixon Kasembe was the first moderator. Yes, that is true. Officially. In initial documents that is what is true. But actually the founder Lakini is Johanna Ngetich. Mwanzilishi ni Johanna Ngetich. I think uh, because uh, Dixon was more educated. Lakini mama Dixon alikuwa amesoma sana. He was given to be the first moderator. Alipewa kuwa moderator wa kwanza. But nevertheless the elder and the founder of HEC. Lakini mwanzilishi na mzee wa kanisa wakati Before there was any official title. Kabla kwa na wakati kusema kwamba kuna kitengo fulani Johanna Ngetich. Johanna Ngetich I have called him Mongesoi because actually that was his name. Mongesoi was his name. Ameito hilo jina hiyo nilikuwa jina lake. I was using that and as a continuation of the M's that we have been using. Natumia ile kuweza kutumia ile zile herufi za M kwa toka tumia. But time is not enough to talk about this story. We need to be closing. Lakini wakati hautoshi tunasema kwamba tunafunga sasa. Johanna Ngetich. Johanna Ngetich was a vibrant fire for the Lord in this part of the world. There are many of you who don't know that he had converted into Islam earlier on in his life. Now we are afraid to read Muslims and yet our first leader was a Muslim. <laughs> he was a Muslim. And that's why no wonder later on when he saw the church and the people who did more to evangelize and reach out to us as missionaries were our own people. So Johanna and his group there were others who came became an amazing witness. Those of you who understand Kalenjin and have listened to uh, the tape te by Lemegu Arabuson, Lemegu talks amazingly about their time in those early days. And he's standing giving a great testimony in a 1982 conference in Kericho. And he says, so with that angelic and beautiful voice of Lemegu Arabuson. And he says, so with that angelic Yake. That you could feel like God is speaking to you. He says Johanna went to sort. And here are his people. Na hapa ndiyo watu wake ndiyo hawa. And he said we remain in Belgut. And here are our people. Na hawa ndiyo watu wetu. And the same people now. Na watu wale wale ambao. Have joined together. Wamekusanyika pamoja. To take the gospel to the whole world. Kupeleka injili katika duniani pote. The children of Lemegu. Watoto wa Lemegu. The children of Johanna. Watoto wa Johanna. It is now our time. Ni hasa ni wakati wetu. And this era was set in motion to us by none other than these heroes who are sitting here today. Na kamba hii wefanya kama na wama shuja ambao kumeketi katikati yetu siku ya. Time is not enough to talk about the Magibiors. Wakati ya ujatosha kwenye kuzi Magibiors. And I believe even some of what Pastor Magibiors Pastor Benjamin shared with you can actually fill in in a small way to the story, the great story of the Magibiors. They actually need to write a book. Because the story of the Magibiors is our story. There is something I took note of uh, their story. I took note of 1966. Because it is not written anywhere in our history. He only has it. How many of us knew that Frederick Nell here in 1966? And Reverend, who are the elders who prayed for you? Reverend Johanna. Reverend Johanna. Reverend Zagayo. Lemegu, Petro Rapsigira. Petro Rapsigira. Hearing those names, Lemegu is in there. Lemegu ako apo ndani. Petro Rapsigira. Petro Rapsigira ako apo. He's my clansman. I get inspiration from him. He's gone, but I'm come ago, so extending the kingdom like he did. Petro Rapsigira. Petro. Lemegu. Lemegu. Johanna. Na Johanna. Which is Mongesoe? Mm-hmm. 
and Sagaya. Nazakayo. Arab Sonoya. Arab Sonoya. Now, do you, do you see the connection from the holiness movement to Johanna? Do you see the connection between the Mongesoi and the Magibures? In Ashikana. Vizuri. So that is our story. Hiyo ndiyo hadithi yetu. And now Kisotu. <laughs> and after Kisotu you. Baada ya Kisotu ni wewe. So I, you've heard about the Ngito, which became a window. Tumezea kuhusu Ngito ambayo yukwani hasa ni kama adelisha. As in 1 Corinthians 6, 16, 8 to 9. Kama vile wa Corinthians wa kwanza kumina sita, nane haditisa. So from 1967, we had Niagara. Tudakuwa na Niagara. 1969, we began the thoughts of West Pokot. Tukaingia West Pokot. 1988, we went to Tarquel. became an, it was like Antioch. Eh? Antioch. God bless David Mutai. David Mutai. David Mutai is currently in Cameroon. Ako Cameroon kwa sasa. He sent his greetings. Ametuma zake. David, we thank God, is coming back to ministry. As you all know, there was a problem. And uh, <clears throat> we are restoring David back to ministry. So wherever he comes, receive him well. He's, he's our hero. And a soldier that was injured in battle. But we have never left him. He is attending actually a missions conference in Cameroon. That mission to Tarquel was an amazing mission. The, it was this project, the hydro, uh, was it, uh, what was it? Mm -hmm. Eh? Yeah, it was a nitro project. Mm -hmm. And so it was a meeting ground between the Turganas and the Pokot. Some from west, some from east. So from Tarquel, the gospel went to Kangolitia. And from Tarquel, the gospel went to Turgan. Turgana. Turgana. From Tarquel, the gospel came to Ngoron. From Ngoron. Where David Maritim and his wife Gladys served. David Maritim and Gladys And then the, the, into Turgana, it has been pushing Nota and Nota and Nota. But the most amazing story is the one of Kangolitia. Lakini ya kushangaza nile yasa ya Kangolitia. They are ministering to the Pokots in Uganda. They are ministering to uh, the Karamoja. Na Karamoja. Na ile gine anaita Dabash. Dabashang. Dabashang. Think about the, the family. So I, I close here. hapa. By saying God has been so good to us. That. <clears throat> They, even in Kangolitian, Kangolitian, are connected all the way. Moja kwa moja, all the way to the Spirit of God that moved in the early church. And we celebrate this. Na tunafurahia hiyo. I have reached the end of my presentation. Mwisho wa kuleta yangu hapa. And this lesson, ya somo hili, I hope it is of some use to you. 